Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So next segment of our etiquette video, we're going to be talking about spectators. So many of you have also sent in comment saying, can you teach spectators to be spectators? Like, why are people standing up? Why are people making noise when they're watching? Why are people so rude? when people are trying to play. Yeah, I get you. Stay tuned. It's a wonderful day on the tennis court. A wonderful day on the tennis court. A gorgeous day on the tennis court. Won't you be my? Can you be my? Won't you be my partner? Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Mr. Tennis Spin's Etiquette. All right, so this question about etiquette actually came from Donovan Bailey. Donovan writes, thank you for sharing your knowledge of the game. You have helped me immensely. I'm slowly turning into an equipment nerd. Uh, I went to the U.S. Open last week. It was my first time attending a professional tournament. I wasn't surprised to see some spectators' lack of knowing how the game is played, scoring, switching sides, ball changes, why players inspect balls, etc. What I was taken aback by was the lack of etiquette that was happening, talking loudly, moving around during points, clapping because their favorite player's opponent faulted, people not sitting down after the head umpire told them to. You would know more to add to this list. My question is, how do we get the spectators to know the rules of being an audience. Whose responsibility is it and where should it start? Possible video idea. Once again, thank you for having a great channel, Donovan. Well, Donovan, it's gonna start right here with Coach Rob and me. For all those spectators, who think that they're at a basketball game or a football game or a baseball game. We have to remember, tennis is not one of those games. It's a gentleman's game. So we'll start now. Coach Rob, let's talk about the, uh, the spectators, but let's talk about not just the ones in the professional uh, events or tournaments. Let's just talk about the daily spectators to start. Uh, I mean, we, you see parents all the time. Uh, and you know, I feel like we should start with them. They obviously should know better, even though some of them don't play. But I mean, what do you think? A lot of the ones that don't play just know what they know from the sports that they've also either played in or been a spectator at. And so they sort of think they're all the same. Right. And, it, you know, it's they're obviously not all the same. Golf and tennis are a little bit more similar. Um, you know, football and maybe a basketball or whatever are, you know, big audiences don't require you know, silence, you have, say, in basketball, somebody shooting a free throw, there's people banging, waving, uh, thunder sticks or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, that's obviously different than you would have in tennis. So I think um, a little bit of it is, is you know, you have to, somebody, whether it be the pros, whether it be, you know, coaches or whatever that need to, um, you know, try to educate parents on how to act if they're not, if they're a non-tennis player. Right. Um, and you try to help them, hey, applaud good tennis. 
Right. Doesn't matter who won or lost the point, applaud good tennis. Right. Um, you know, if my kid double faults, I'm hoping Harry's not over there. His parents aren't sitting there clapping because I can't make, you know, one out of two serves. Right. Um, sure, your parents want you to win. Right. Just like my parents want me to win. But you still have to try to go about knowing that it's a learning experience. And a lot of it is not so much learning for the players, but it's also how to help the parents learn. Right. So let's not uh, celebrate a negative event, right? Uh, when you fault, when somebody faults and you're, you're for your, the opponent, right? We don't celebrate that, okay? We, we just stay quiet and let's be respectful, okay? Uh, don't be that jerk that celebrates every single thing negative that the opponent does because that just means you're a jerk. Wasn't it Serena? I think somebody, uh, they double, or Serena's opponent double faulted at the U.S. Open and mm -hmm. the cloud really cheered and she was like, no, right. don't do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so she was trying to educate, right. like, that's not how this goes. I, we're not doing it that way. Yep. Um, you know, so hats off for her for, you know, taking a second and go, look, that's, that's not how this is done. That's not how we... Uh, professionals want um, this this uh, match to have that experience. We That's want it to be done right. Not acceptable, guys. Right. Not acceptable. So l let's, let's talk about why the game, when it's being played, needs to be quiet. Like, why do we need silence during a point? I think it's probably just sort of tradition of the way it had come along back to your, you know, it's a gentleman's sport. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at your audience being, um, you know, probably more, I don't know, call it, you know, wine sipping crowd, but it is more, um, you just need a little bit more quiet when you're hitting a putt or you're hitting a golf ball or you're hitting a tennis ball than you do um, in some of the other sports. I think uh, some of it has to do with sound, too, because you want to hear the ball being Correct. struck. You want to hear the ball being struck by your opponent. Yep. Uh, therefore, you can kind of judge speed and spin right. uh, from your opponent and your own shots. For sure. Therefore, you kind of need it as silent as possible. Um, why do you need people to stand still <laughs> or sit still? Well, you, hopefully you're not going to get their eye, someone moving and standing and waving mm -hmm. to their friend on the other side. Hey, look at me. I'm on a TikTok or whatever social media thing is out there. Hey, look at me while the game is going on because right. that is going to be easily distractible. Right. Um, you know, from a player who's used to playing and practicing under conditions that are, um, you know, in a quiet environment. Right. I know. I mean... I don't know about you guys, but when people are moving around a tennis court and a ball is also moving, right, your eye catches things that move, just automatically zooms in there. Whether you want it or not, your peripheral vision kind of just sees things that are like moving. Therefore, it, it's a distraction, right? You wouldn't want... Um, you know, let's say if you're playing baseball, you wouldn't want the shortstop running around behind the pitcher, right, when he's throwing a pitch, right? That would be distracting. I don't know if it's legal, but, you know, it, you wouldn't want that. That would throw you off as a hitter, right? So, and you don't want people moving uh, when you're about to hit a forehand or a serve, right? And, and I've heard many, many times during the, the U.S. Open uh, that the, uh, the chair umpire has said, please, please be respectful of the players and be quiet. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, and, and um, it, it, they shouldn't have to do that. And the, either the ushers or the security or whatever you know, a lot of it is you have people moving down on changeovers. You have people getting up. Now, sure, if somebody's going to have to go to the bathroom and you didn't plan it out right or it was a really long two games and you got to go and get up and whatnot. But um, you, you kind of have to be smart and, 
And, um, you know, I know the fans are paying a lot of money for their seat and mm -hmm. they think they have the right to come and go as they please. And, you know, that's not the case. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are like, oh, where's my seat? What seat number I am? While they're holding up the event. Like, right. this is their, these players, this is their livelihood. This is their job. It's, right. it's, yeah, it's recreational for you to go watch and see them play, but it's your free time. But this is their work environment. So, you have to be respectful for somebody who's trying to make a living and um, perform, and they're performing for the fans. I right. Mean, that's, um, I feel like the easiest way to learn would be to follow the crowd. I feel like most of the people who are spectators know right from wrong. And as a new spectator... Or a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> what or yeah yeah um, <laughs> you can learn from just taking a step back and observing what's going on you know like even when you kind of walk in um why do i have to wait here right don't question it just observe like why is everybody else waiting here why is the usher stopping me or ask them Right. Why are we waiting? Oh, okay. I didn't know we can't go. We can't move on the until a changeover. Right. Right. You and know, you have ninety seconds. It's not a lot of time to get. You know, if you're the last person and they've let ten people in front of you go, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna be the last one getting to your seat, especially if you have good seats and you're down low. Um, you know, um, it's it's a it's a complicated thing, but it shouldn't be. You right. know, get there early. Get to your seat early, know where you're sitting, get what you need, and uh, enjoy a great match, hopefully. What about conversing? Like, you see people, like, just carrying on, drinking a beer or whatever, just talking about... Somebody probably gave them the tickets, they're not really a tennis <laughs> fan, and they heard it was cool, and here they are. And, you know, th their conversation they think is more important than the people actually playing in the... 15 other thousand that are there to watch the right event. exactly don't be that person that they're calling out saying please please yeah they're talking to you all well, right like who's <laughs> getting a haircut wasn't there a thing about some guy was oh, getting a haircut like, are you serious I'm like that's crazy no it wasn't actually a haircut it was a publicity stunt for uh for youtube but wasn't it a guy, was he actually getting the haircut? I don't or think was he, he was. I think they were just trying to try do it to get the attention. It? Okay. Yeah, to get the attention. So, so we know that there's you know, people doing stunts to get attention for the channel. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of getting a little out of hand here. But, uh, you know, don't, don't do it in a public space like that i mean I, I heard somebody was uh trying to surf in a in a water fountain last week in disney world oh okay <laughs> security got to that in a hurry <laughs> so yeah. but but i feel like as a spectator um observe the crowd just whatever they do it's probably gonna be the right thing if everybody's quiet, should you really be the one talking? When everybody's sitting down, should you really get up? Right? It's kind of common sense, which I feel like Some you know, don't have. common and sense is a is a lost thing these days. Uh, it, it's it's not all about you, you know, um, but. But yeah, let, let's maybe learn to be a spectator a little bit. I mean, when you're watching or if you're watching tennis on television and you don't know anything about the sport, I mean, take a look. What's going on in the crowd? Why is it quiet when they're in play? Why do things move when they're not playing? Why do people move? Why do people do things? It, 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 we just have to observe as a, you know, a person with common sense. Right. Anything more to add? <laughs> I, I think you got it pretty good, Harry. Okay. All right. I hope the people that should be watching this and learning from it are watching it. My fear is the tennis fans who are watching already know this 
and hopefully we're just reinforcing it to them and hopefully they can then share it to when somebody else, when they see something going wrong, they can say, hey buddy, now's not the time or find a way to um, share um, the values that the, you know, and the, and the way uh, matches uh, go and the way fans should act. Right, so be respectful to the players, be respectful to the ushers, be respectful to each other, and be mindful, respectful, and try to be professional. Try to be a professional spectator because at the end of the day, we got to live with each other. And, you know, the game is as good and as um, professional as, like, say, let's say the worst person out there. That's, you know, because you don't want to be that example of the jerk, right? Or the, the, the bad spectator. Um, but, and, and if you're watching and you know all this already, share it with those people who don't, maybe the younger generation who kind of maybe need to learn a little bit about this. Okay. Cause we all kind of need reinforcement in today's day and age. Want to thank my most respected coach, Rob, who's a great friend and who I chose to kind of share this information with you. Thank you, Coach Rob. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Guys, love each other, respect the game, respect everything, okay? Cherish it, because it's all about us and people and getting along. All right, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin, on your tennis. Guys, are you tired of playing against the ball machine? The ball machine always wins and you're not really getting any interaction with people. How about playing with somebody at your level or maybe a little bit better than you that can improve your game. There's 27,000 people nationwide waiting for you to play with. It's all at playyourcourt.com. You can find your new tennis friend, join local leagues, all for less than $5 a month. You'll have access to players at your level, your speed, and make some new tennis friends. Check it out at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Link is below.